in the name of one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. After Abram heard a call from God, our spiritual ancestors set out on a journey like no other. God said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house into the land that I will show you. Abram and Sarai were being asked to leave everything they knew. Their country, where they spoke the language, knew the customs, and knew their place in the scheme of things. They were to leave their circle of friends and relatives, the people that they knew and loved. They had to leave their home, their familiar ways of doing things, all this without knowing where they were going or when they would arrive. They did not, however, go alone. Their nephew Lot went with them, along with their combined households, servants, slaves, herdsmen and their families, and all their flocks and herds. With this great entourage, they traveled over 500 miles to the land that God showed them. Imagine that journey. Before all the modern conveniences that we take for granted, traveling all that way would have been slow going. Setting up camp for dozens of people, pitching tents, unpacking bedding, building fires, fetching water. They would have had to stay in one place or another for some length of time, for they still had all of life to attend to while they were on the way. They would need to graze their herds, prepare food, and attend to so many other tasks on behalf of the people and animals in their care. They may also have needed to stay put from time to time as they waited on God to lead them to the next stage of their journey. We don't know how long it was that these nomadic people traveled in this way. We do know that when they arrived in Canaan and God said, yes, this is the place, that even then they didn't settle down but they lived on the edges of that place in tents. The story of Abram and Sarai is a template for our life with God. God calls us to be on a journey with God. Even though we might know, not know specifically where we are going or when or how it is that we will get there, we set out on this journey and take it in stages. We follow God's lead step by step to the place that God has envisioned for us and that Jesus taught us. We call that ultimate destination the kingdom of God, where justice rains down like waters, where mercy flows like a never-ending stream where every person is our neighbor whom we love and honor as if they were our own kin. So we keep on in stages towards this vision, that promised land flowing with resources enough for all, where all are fed, clothed, and made whole. It's not easy, of course, and like our spiritual ancestors before us, we may be asked to leave behind some of those things that are most familiar to us, our customary places, our favorite ways of doing things. We may be asked to journey with people 
with and among people who may not understand us, who may not speak the same language as us or share our values and vision for the world. As God's people, we are asked to stay a little bit unsettled, to stay open to the promptings of the Spirit and wait for that next phase of the journey that God will inspire. I believe that we are on the verge of such a moment right now. God is up to something in this time and in this place. We are in discernment, listening and waiting for the movement of the Holy Spirit. And while we wait for whatever it is that God is about to do, we keep ready and continue to care for those in our midst, tending to our families and neighbors, welcoming the strangers in our midst, and offering hospitality to others on their way. We have not yet arrived into the fullness of God's kingdom, but we journey on following God's promise. That same promise that was given to Abram and Sarai, God said to them, I will bless you so that you will be a blessing, so that in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Much is made of Abram and Sarai's faithfulness, but their faithfulness and ours is made possible by God's faithfulness, God's love, and God's mercy. God did not give up on humankind, and God does not give up on us. God chooses instead to bless us in order that we might be a blessing to all the families of the earth. And so we wait and set up our tents where hope lives. We keep on caring for those we encounter and all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. And in this way, we shall be a blessing. As we continue our journey of love through Lent, let us pause and pray in the words of Thomas Merton. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. <laughs> And the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I, I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen.